AI Mimran Web Squadron. A lot of people sometimes doubt their ability to create websites or they get imposter syndrome kick in. We all go through that, but I say be courageous, be confident in, your, in yourself, experiment, and you will become better at what you're doing and you will crush it, trust me. But that being said, there are some things you really do need to think about when you are designing websites. Now I'm gonna go over some tips that I often let people know or when I'm having consultations and I really think you gotta consider them before you start building a website. Number one, don't be dismissive over screen sizes, okay? Desktop, tablet, laptop, even mobile, things like that. It's really easy to design a website and then when it switches to tablet or mobile, you or the client, you have disagreements how things look. You've really got to appreciate that what you build as a website for the desktop, you've got to accept that when you go to a mobile or a tablet, things change. The content, the layout, all of that. The buzzword in web design is responsiveness, okay? And you know, in Elemental, you have responsive types, you know, desktop, tablet, mobile, and other page builders as well. Responsiveness basically means that, you know, you start with your website, you got your hero banner, you got, you might have four columns going along a row, maybe because you're showing over some, showing off some services. And when you shrink the screen down to a mobile, you can't show four columns now, otherwise it looks super, super cramped. So you gotta switch it over to two columns. Don't fall into the mindset, and I hear this a lot, well no, I want my mobile to look exactly like the desktop. Do you know how many times I've had clients or people saying they wanna achieve that? And you look at their desktop and you go, so you're trying to get all of this stuff over here onto that size screen, and you kind of go, it ain't gonna work. And they go, yeah, but there must be a way to work. And I go, well, okay, I'll tell you what, if you drop your font size to be size like two pixels, you could probably get it to work. But don't be dismissive over it, okay? And start planning it out. So when you're designing a website with a client or uh, someone else gives you a spec, Ask them the question, where's the mobile layout? You know, don't just give, don't just take the desktop and then work it out yourself. So if the client goes, they want, duh, 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 go, okay, but for the mobile, would you be happy for me to maybe hide some of them or not? And that brings me on to tip number two, where you must again appreciate breakpoints. Now, if you're using a page builder that gives you breakpoints like Elementor, Bricks and other page builders, that is great, use them change the layout and keep working to that mindset. But if you're building from scratch with HTML and CSS and all of that, make sure you're using the app media uh, codes and all of that to account for breakpoints. Tip number three kind of relates to tip number one and tip number two. God, there's a bit of a pattern going on here, right? Your desktop, like I said, hero banner, you might have call to action. You know, you got your headers, you got services about me, you got lots of stuff going on. You move over to the mobile, all of that content now might shift to be more vertical. So suddenly four columns in a row becomes four individual rows. Now your pages become much, much longer. Do you need to see all of that? Does it help the flow of the website, the expected conversion or the journey for the visitor? Maybe you can hide some of those items or maybe completely redefine them. You know, on the desktop, you might have like a telephone icon with your number on there. Maybe on the mobile, get rid of the number and just have the telephone icon or the other way around. Have a think about your layout. And again, this all comes back to appreciating how does your website look on a desktop and a mobile. But be mindful of your flow. You've got a lot going on in the desktop. When you move down to the mobile, you might need to like take stuff out. And that brings me on to tip number four. Do you start building from the desktop and then work down to the tablet and the mobile? I do like to work from desktop and downwards. Other people like to start the mobile and go upwards. Here's why I start at the desktop. I like to have all my components on the page. I know what's gonna be there. And when I move to tablet and mobile, I can take stuff out. I find it easier to strip out. It's a bit like writing a book. Get all of your stuff on the page, and then edit out. You know, when you go, oh, that's too long, that's not right, whatever, you tweak it. If, however, some people like to start on the mobile, because let's be honest here, we spend more time looking at websites on our mobiles and smartphones than ever before. So if you get the mobile right, as you work upwards to bigger screen sizes, you can then add uh, extra components in maybe, or expand them and make them bigger. But I like to start on the desktop and strip out rather than add back in, because then I often I find I'm kind of jumping between mobile, desktop, mobile, desktop. But hey, 
There is no right and wrong answer. Go for what works for you. Tip number five is start to make better use of your real estate on your page and how you lay things out, okay? So this is kind of like with regards to like containers or flex box and things like that and also inner sections as well. If you use inner sections, you're gonna be adding on more DOM and code onto your website. It's a matter of fact, okay? If you just have one inner section, you might get away with it too many intersections or an intersection within an intersection, you're just adding on more code and things can become a little bit slower to render on your page. If you're using containers or Flexbox or anything like that, you can have much more intricate designs which are lighter on code, but that will depend on your page builder and your methodology. But if you do find you're using a lot of intersections, then please reach out to me or other people because you know what? Often when I see someone that's using a lot of intersections, I kind of go, you could have done X, Y, Z and maybe a bit of custom whip or inlining or something like that. You didn't need to use that layout. So please be mindful of what you're building and how much code you're adding on. Tip number six is don't use pixels for your fonts, okay? You're much better using REM. And when it comes to laying things out, it's a good idea to start making use of percentage, VW and VH, okay? Uh, loads of page builders have those built in. It just means that as you're moving down the different screen sizes from desktop to mobile to sorry desktop to tablet to mobile you are standardizing how things look so if you start to say that your content on your page is always about three percent uh, on the left and right away from you know the complete edge of the screen as you move down the different screen sizes even to mobile it will always be three percent from the edges okay if you go and say 20 pixels and I'm guilty of doing that 20 pixels on the left and right when you go down to the mobile now all of a sudden you've taken away 20 which might be more than actually what you needed to take away but have a think about that okay but please don't make the mistake of using pixels for fonts because it's not a very good way to do it responsibly and REM is the way to go with your fonts and that nicely flows into tip number seven about preloading your fonts especially if you're using Google fonts. Did you know that when you find a font in your page builder and you go, oh, it's got that there, Railway or Montserrat, I'll just pick it. You're actually fetching that from the Google server. You might think, well, no, it was already available. Yeah, I know it's available, but you're fetching it from the Google server. You're fetching it, okay? And it can add a tiny bit of a delay onto your website. You could argue it is negligible, but doesn't help with your page speed score, especially if you care about that in terms of performance or your Google rankings. So make sure you preload your fonts. There's loads of facilities in page builders and WordPress to get custom fonts in. But I wanna go a step further. Often we are too quick to do that. You know, we're very quick to go, yeah, I've preloaded it, so I don't need to worry. But do you need to preload a font? Did we really need that special cal calligraphic font or funky, fancy style? What was wrong with the system font? And if you dig a bit deeper into what you have within your browsers, like things like Arial, Times New Roman, and many other ones, I mean, Times New Roman's probably not the best one, but there's lots of system fonts that are already available within the browsers. So often have a think about, did you really need to do that? And was just using uh, whatever came within the system already? And by the way, your page builders will show that for you. A great example is Bricks Builder, where it gives you a, a selection of fonts. Now, if you want anything else, you've got to go and custom load them yourself. But if you use a system load font, it is going to load far, far quicker. But that being said, if you want a custom font, make sure you preload them and custom load them in. Don't just pick it and hope for the best, all right, because the delay will hit you. Tip number eight is one I am very passionate about when it comes to images. You gotta make sure you compress and convert them to WebP. I know people will say, but our devices, you know, don't really work on it. That's probably because you haven't updated your device in the last two years with your operating system, but the world has moved on, the world has evolved. Get on board with WebP images, okay? PNGs are huge, JPEGs are smaller, WebP even smaller. It's okay to start with a PNG image for great resolution but then compress and convert it down to WebP before you add it into your media library. And that being said, don't just stop there. When you have an image on your desktop, you might need to add in a copy or resize it for the tablet and the mobile, because believe me, does the image really need to be 1920 pixels wide? 
for the mobile? No, it doesn't, right? So think about different sized images. And even when you add an image onto a web page, again, the same principle applies. It might be originally a 1920 wide image, but on your web page, it is now, even on a desktop, it's only 300 pixels wide. Fine. Get a 300 pixel wide copy of that image on. Think about how much space you're taking up on your server and what you're asking the browser and your website to do when it's rendering the page. Tip number nine. This again is one of my favorites. When you're building out a website, you've got your flow, you've got your layout, you know what you're going to do at the different breakpoints, you've got your fonts, you've got your images and the works, your content. When you're building out your containers or your sections or your columns or whatever you want to call them, just get the content on. Just dump it in. So if I know I've got a container or a section, it's going to have a heading, a subheading, a call to action button, and it might have an image here or there or whatever and a divider line maybe. Just get them on. And when I say get them on, get them on in the order you want them to look. Okay, get them on. Then mess around with your margins and your padding. Okay, then switch over to the tablet mode and refine the font sizes or the layout a little bit. Then get onto the mobile, do the same again. Don't you dare move on to the next container or section until you have got the perfect container section, okay? Make sure you've got it perfected. Why, why am I doing that? Because when you move on to the next section or container, you might just duplicate it. It won't look the same right? It won't look the same. There'll be different images, different content, different whatevers, colors, all of that. But if you've sorted out your margins and your paddings and your font sizes and all of that in that section, when you come on to the next one, when you move to tablet or mobile, it's already built in for you. You don't have to sit there and do your percentages again. If you had a text editor in section one and you've already said, okay, for the desktop, it will be REM 1.15. On the tablet, it will be 1.1. On the mobile, it will be REM 1. Because normally REM 1 is equal to 16 pixels or you can refine that with other page builders. Every time you use that text editor, it will remember the different sizes. A bit of effort getting what I call the perfect section makes things so much more efficient as you work through the website. I hope those nine tips help you out to design a little bit better. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win your life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that stack, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag, cause I sing.